Hi, I'm Nick at SideView, and this video is a brief introduction to SideView's Splunk app called Splunk for Cisco CDR. By the way, I strongly advise you to make this video full screen, otherwise you won't be able to read much on my screen. Splunk for Cisco CDR is a great reporting solution for Cisco Call Manager, otherwise known as Cisco Unified Communications Manager. And our solution has been around for a couple years now. Splunk for Cisco CDR is first and foremost a Splunk app, meaning that it runs inside Splunk. If you don't know what that means, it just means you download the Splunk server from Splunk. You then download, you install Splunk into your own hardware, and then you download and install our app into Splunk. Basically, you can download a trial version of both Splunk and a trial version of our app right now and set up a trial solution on your production CDR data in about 15 minutes. There are docs on the site, and um, these docs cover everything from the very beginning where you're choosing which hardware you're going to install Splunk on to uh, optional setup steps after after you get it all up and running. So let's say you go through all this. So let's skip to the fun part. The docs look very long, but that's because they take you through every single possible step. So at the beginning, the most important part of the app uh, for a new user is this table here. This table goes through all of the uh, fields that are available in the data, data itself. Our solution really allows you to graph and generate any report about any of the data that's in the CDR and CMR fields. Uh, but the catch is that the data in CDR and CMR is overwhelmingly verbose. So to sort of narrow down your focus, always start at this table. Uh, this table also divides up the fields into, into uh, core field groups. And so you can narrow it down to, say, call release reason fields or calling and call parties, or really start with core fields. It looks here that there's about 87 fields. There's really about 120. We only provide contextual help here for some of them. So um, there are more than this, believe it or not. So I've, I've selected core fields. And you can see that next to every one of these fields, there's, of course, there's a description. And there's also a number of sample reports. So each of these sample reports is really just a link. It just goes into the, the app's reporting tool and pre-populates the fields in a certain way so as to run the given report. So these aren't really canned reports. They're, they're just examples. So let's say that we want to do interested in our originating gateway. We're interested in the number of inbound calls over time split by gateway. So let's click this. You can see that the form fields on this page, this is our reporting tool, this, the form fields are divided up into groups. Let's just go through these groups a little bit. At the top, all of these things are really going to take action to filter the calls that are going into the report. So we can set, we can restrict to just incoming calls, etc. And the second section here that says chart the distinct count of calls over time split by originating gateway. The second field is this is really determining what statistical report we run and what fields we want to involve in that report. And then last but not least, you can change the sort of visualization type if you want. But let's leave it on stacked column because that's what the link said to do. Note that um, that huge number of fields is all in here. So you can do really any statistic of any of the fields over any other field on the x-axis, optionally split by any other field. We can, we can do, of course, split by none, and then that whole dimension disappears, and it's much simpler. But here, we were splitting by a ridge cause description, so let me put that back the way it was. Or, well, heck, let me just use the back button. Okay. So last 24 hours, incoming calls, all clusters. OK, this is our inbound call counts split by gateway. OK, let's say this sample report, yeah, this, this is actually what I want. I, I'm, I'm here, say I'm uh, investigating a spike at around 11.45 last night. Um, I want to create a dashboard panel for this right now, and I want to share it with some coworkers. Okay. Dashboard name. And 
incident investigation. I'm going to make it a new dashboard. I'm going to make this a column. Run search each time the dashboard loads. Okay, I've created a dashboard. Here it is. I can now share it. I can email PDFs around if I really want to. I'm going to just go back and edit this to turn my stack mode back on. Okay, let's go back to that report. Say my coworkers are appropriately blown away that I've put together an incident dashboard right away. But say I'm not done. Well, we found a spike, but what did that mean? Uh, whenever you're on the report page, you can always click an element on the chart or an element in the legend, and it will drill into to those calls. Uh, unlike in Core Splunk, drill downs uh, there would dump you into the raw events. In this case, it would be raw CDR data, which is really noisy. But the Splunk Francisco CDR app will keep you in the reporting solution. So I click on this spike, and you're going to see it's just narrowed down my originating gateway to be that one gateway. It's changed my time range now, so I'm narrowed into that one half hour period. And these are those weird anomalous calls. Well, all right, now what? Um, let's maybe look at average duration for these calls. I'm just going to pick some random stuff to look at. Okay, these are almost all zero duration calls, I guess. That's interesting. Say so I go back to distinct count of calls, which is where I was before, over time, split by... Well, actually, you know, the, the strange thing about it is that these are all on one gateway right here. Well, let's split by duration, see uh, exactly what pattern of durations we have. I'm assuming they're almost all zero because of that average. Oh, yeah, and indeed, we have uh, every now and then one of them was a one second call, but most of them were zero second calls. So that's peculiar. That's like a weird little call storm. I might create another dashboard panel. add this to an existing dashboard and you can see I've got some mess in here. Now my dashboard has two charts on it. My total investment in this incident is less than five minutes. So now I don't want you to remember all this flashy stuff. I want you to remember if you remember one thing from this video how you get started by playing around with this table here. This table that goes through all of the fields. And so you can do anything yourself. You can, you can come in and I'm just going to pick something totally at random, actually. You can come in and you can click really anything. You'll, you'll come back around. You'll be looking at a table or a chart. You can drill in further. And you can always go out and just get out of reporting and go over to browse calls. Whenever you're in a report, you can always bail out and go just look at the underlying calls. Go back to nouns and verbs that you understand. And from the browse calls page, which of course you can, you can get to the browse calls page manually, and it's, it itself serves as a nice simple call reporting tool. But from the browse calls page, however you get there, you can always click a call and it'll take you to call detail. Call detail will give you everything that you could possibly ever want to know about this call. It'll break it up into individual legs. It'll show you what the recipients were. It'll give you lots of information. Again, what's the one thing that I want you to remember? The home page table. It breaks it out by fields. Come to here, browse through this table, click a bunch of links, get the hang of it, and, um, and before you know it, you'll be generating awesome reports and dashboards. Well, that's about it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, there will hopefully be more and deeper uh, demos about this app. There are other features in here. There's a call concurrency tool. There's a busy, uh, busy hour calculator that's extremely useful. Uh, you can set up alerting and monitoring, blah, blah, blah. You can set up groups. You can pull in information from other things. You can, you can mash up this data with other data in your, in your enterprise infrastructure. And that's all she wrote. Take care. Thanks for watching.